It's my pleasure now to give you a short overview about recent developments in the field of antibody drug conjugates in the focus on HER2 positive breast cancer. But as you know, it's not just in HER2 positive breast cancer, but antibody drug conjugates are also important or will be soon important in HER2 low breast cancer, new subtype of breast cancer. And if we think of Secutuzumab covid can also in triple negative breast cancer. The whole story, of course, started with TDM1, Tristuzumab m -tansin. So the conjugate of Tristuzumab and the mitansin derivative, a microtubule inhibitor bound to Tristuzumab. TDM1 is still the standard treatment approach in second line in HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer, a highly active drug. But there are two issues, of course. One is that eventually patients will still progress, so we need other treatment options from the third line setting on. And then, of course, the, her, the standard HER2 directed drugs, such as Tristuzumab, Pertuzumab, and also TDM1, are now being widely used in the new adjuvant, adjuvant, and past new adjuvant settings. So there will be situations if patients progress after all these standard treatment approaches in early stage breast cancer where completely novel drugs will be needed. And uh, just recently, the European Medicines Agency have approved, has approved two novel drugs. One is to cut the third generation tyrosine kinase inhibitor in combination with capecitabine and trastuzumab, the drug that has shown high activity improvement of progression-free survival and overall survival, and especially considerable activity in patients with active brain metastasis. And then, of course, trastuzumab, derux the third generation antibody drug conjugate. And that's a conjugate, again, of trastuzumab and the topoisomer as one inhibitor, derux And this is a topoisomer as one inhibitor with a very high inhibitory activity. It's about tenfold higher than SN38, which is the active metabolite of irinotecan. And it also has a higher drug to antibody ratio, which is in the range of about eight to one. And in addition, the chemotherapeutic agent derixtecan has an increased membrane permeability. So a bystander effect can be believe that it happens, so which means that we are able to overcome disease heterogeneity. What data do we have for Tristuzumab derix -Dekin? Well, it has been approved based upon the single arm phase two trial, Destiny Presto 1. And the heavily pretreated patients that received the median of six prior treatment lines received single agent tristuzumab derux -Dekin. And as you know, a very high response rate has been observed in excess of 60%. And at the 2020 Virtual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, a prolonged progression-free survival in the range of 19 months was observed. So this shows the very high activity of tristuzumab derux -Dekin. Of course, there is the caveat that these data come from a single arm phase two trial, and we are still awaiting the randomized data, which I believe to be available this year. What else do we know about tristuzumab derux -Dekin? Well, the most important toxicity perhaps, which occurs in the range of about 15% of patients, is ILD pneumonitis. This is something the physicians and the patients both need to be aware of and the patients need to be properly informed. Often it's low grade, it usually happens relatively early on during the first six to 12 months of treatment with a lower risk during the later treatment period. It's important to react promptly to the diagnosis of, of ILD, interruption of treatment, permanent stop of tristuzumab derux -Dekin, if grade two or higher ILD occurs and quick initiation of corticosteroids. So usually the, the issue of ILD is manageable with these measures. It's important to see that tristuzumab derux -Dekin also has activity in a new subtype of breast cancer, newly defined subtype of breast cancer, which we call the HER2 low-expressing patients. HER2 low-expressing means 
less HER2 protein in the cell membrane by immune histochemistry. So one plus or two plus, not three plus. And in case of two plus, no HER2 new gene amplification. It shows considerable activity there as well. It's the first HER2 directed agent that also has activity in this subset of HER2 low patients. And it's important to realize that TDXD is not the only of those novel antibody drug conjugates, but there are several in clinical development. For example, one being uh, CIT985, tristiosumab ducamycin, which is a conjugate of tristiosumab again and the alkylating agent ducamycin. When we look at different other breast cancer subtypes, such as uh, triple negative, there is also a great need for novel treatment options. Of course, immunotherapy has some activity there, but uh, the focus is also there on antibody drug conjugates. And perhaps the most promising drug is uh, sacrituzumab covitikin, which was shown in the phase three ESSEN trial to provide significant high activity than conventional chemotherapy in pre-treated patients with a clinically relevant and statistically significant prolongation of progression-free survival and overall survival as well. In summary, I think with better understanding of the antibody drug conjugate technology, uh, these class of drugs will see further use in the different breast cancer subtypes. They are very, very promising. And tristiosumab can, of course, is one of the most interesting agents in this field.